Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So after I filmed my wardrobe slash closet tour, it seems that quite a few of you wanted to see my full designer handbag collection. So that is the video that I have for you today. I have all my handbags here down on the floor. And actually I didn't realize that I had so many until it came to filming this video. And I was like, oh, totally forgot I had that one. So let's get stuck in. Okay, so I've decided to go through all of the bags kind of by category. So I'm going to start off with larger bags, which I guess I could class as tote bags. Not really sure if this would be a tote bag, but that's the category I've put in anyway. So this is the Givenchy Antigona in the medium size. I don't know why it's called medium because I don't think there is a bigger size. I feel like this should be large because it doesn't come in any larger size. And this one is black smooth leather, but not the glossy. And it actually has the silver studs and silver hardware on it, which makes it a little bit different to just the plain version. Um, this one Simon actually bought me for Christmas. It wasn't the Christmas just gone. Maybe it was the one before. And we actually found this bag on Vestiaire. Now, I love Vestiaire. I use Vestiaire all the time. And we hunted high and low on Vestiaire to find a black Givenchy Antigone. I did originally want one that was plain, but when we came across this one, I was just over the moon and I loved it. We had to have it. This was such a bargain. I literally, for about four or five weeks, any person that I came in contact with, I wanted to tell the story about this bag because we went on to Vestiaire. It was November, it was Black Friday. And literally, as I was on the site, this was uploaded. It was on there for 900 and something pounds, brand new. It had the tag, the original tag attached, and it even had, like when you buy a bag that's brand new and it comes from the stock room, it has that blue, like tapey stuff over all the hardware. It had all of that on all of the hardware. It was immaculate, brand new, never used. Um, but because it was Black Friday, Vestiaire had a voucher code at the top for if you spent over a certain amount of money. So we ended up getting this for literally just a couple of pounds over 800 quid. That is crazy because this bag in this particular style at that time was retailing in Selfridges for 1600 pounds. So the Antigona is a great bag. I mainly use it for traveling. It has the shoulder strap as well and it always always keeps its shape so even how I have it stored in my wardrobe I have the handles folded like this they literally spring back up every time I get it out of my wardrobe it's so sturdy I have crammed so much stuff inside this bag I mean look at that interior you can fit so much in there if you're one of those people that carries your life around in your handbag then this is definitely the way to go. Next up is this tan suede Celine Phantom. Now I'm kind of, I don't know how I feel about this bag. I loved it when I first bought it. Again, this is another vestiaire purchase. Because it's tan suede, you might be able to see. There was some slight colour transfer on the back there, which I've probably made worse as I've worn it. But otherwise it was in really, really good condition. I wanted a phantom for so long and then when I got it, I actually barely used it. It's really, really big. I mean, it's kind of folded in on itself a little bit at the moment, so it's looking a bit sad. But if I just expand it, look at how ginormous that is. It is huge and it doesn't have a shoulder strap. So it has this thing, which I've still not figured out how to use or what to do with. I think it's supposed to close the bag in some way, but I don't know how to do it. And it is literally, you can hold it by the handles or like on the crook of the arm, like a wag, which I'm not particularly a fan of. Um, it's a good bag. I just think the suede maybe is probably not the most practical choice I've ever made. I love the colour. Yeah, may, maybe a bit of a regret, but I don't know. I'll probably keep hold of it a little bit longer before I decide to let it go and go to a new home. I still need some thinking time on this bag. Right, next 
is this red leather Saint Laurent tote. Simon again bought me this one. The same Christmas as the Givenchy Antigona. I didn't know he bought this. This was a surprise, whereas obviously the one from Vestiaire, I had to open just to make sure that it was exactly as described. This one was a very, very pleasant surprise. I could not recommend this tote enough. It's really good for travel. It's good for like those days where you've got loads of shit to do and you just need to throw all kinds of crap in your bag. It's just a really basic bag, but yet it's so practical. Inside, it comes with the little pouch, kind of like the Louis Vuitton Neverfulls. It has a magnetic closure and being Saint Laurent, it has this little, whoop, where is it? pop it out, this little logo on this little key fob lanyard thing. I just like it, it's a nice little touch. And these are actually, for Saint Laurent, quite reasonably priced. I believe this was £565, um, and they come out every single season in so many different colours. Black obviously is a great colour to have. I've had no colour transfer on the back no scuffs or scrapes or scratches it's still in really good condition and i do actually use this quite a lot it looks really good with navy it looks great with stripes um, and it's just such a versatile and practical bag probably the most practical bag that i own right now i'm going to use this bag to kind of bridge the gap between my large totes and my shoulder bags because i can't really figure out what this one would be but as you can see, this is a second Antigona by Givenchy. Uh, this colour, I believe, was called Ivory. So this one was £1,300 and I bought this with um, a very generous gift voucher from Louisa the Aroma. Um, actually, I think it was part gift voucher, part my own money. But nonetheless, it was very, very kind of them. And I quite often find that Louisa the Aroma have a selection of bags which other high-end retailers don't have, so it's always a good place to check out. It's exactly the same as the earlier one, apart from this one is actually the textured leather, and so it doesn't tend to show up scratches as easily as the other one. However, the colour choice on this one was probably not my finest, because there is a bit of denim transfer on the edge of the seam. So you do kind of have to be careful when you're wearing denim because it does rub off on lighter colour bags as you will see with some of my other ones. This is a really, really good bag. It has a shoulder strap, same as the other one, but this one is probably a little bit more wearable for every day because it's not as cumbersome as the medium size. This one is the small, again with silver hardware. Um, inside it is canvas. Exactly the same as the other one, with one zip pocket, an elasticated pocket for your phone, and another patch pocket. Um, I haven't actually worn this one in a few months, and I think that's because I've started wearing a lot of gold jewellery, and now I feel really, really conscious when I go to pick up a bag with silver hardware. In my mind, I'm just like, that doesn't match my jewellery, and I instantly go to put it back and pick another one up that does have gold hardware. So I think I need to start using this a bit more because it's such a good bag. Now it's time for my fae. This bag holds quite a special place in my heart because this was a 30th birthday present to myself a couple of years ago. And this was probably the first luxury item that I bought in celebration that my blog started doing really well. And it was kind of like the first design piece that I could actually afford to buy without feeling completely broke. And it was the first round of Chloe Faze that came out. This colour is Misty Beige. It was a choice of black and Misty Beige. And everyone on Instagram told me to buy Misty Beige. I bought it, I loved it. I cannot explain how much I loved this bag. It was like my child. I like even kissed it a couple of nights. But as you can see, the love affair soon wore thin because I took this away. I'd had it for about three weeks maximum. I took it away after we got married. We went to Venice and Budapest on our mini moon straight after we got married. And I think maybe just the pollution of the two cities or maybe the choice of my outfits that I had on while I was there, it just got filthy and I was devastated. I took it to 
um, a handbag spa, which yes, they do exist, on the King's Road called the Handbag Clinic and asked if they could clean it because I'd seen their Instagram account, seen their website and they have worked wonders on so many bags. Took it to them, nothing that they could do because this area here isn't actually suede, it's nubuck and apparently nubuck cannot be cleaned. So if this was dirty, they could have cleaned that, no problem. But this bit, the leather is actually fine. Um, so sadly, this bay doesn't get used very often and I'm gutted about that. But if anyone has any suggestions for how I could get this cleaned and kind of restore her back to her um, original glory, then please leave those in the comments below because this bag won't be going anywhere. I'll never get rid of this bag because it does hold sentimental value to me. Um, but I would like to use it a lot more because the Faye is actually a really good bag. It's got these three compartments, so it's so roomy inside. And yeah, it's just a beautiful bag. It just seems a shame that it just literally sits in my wardrobe. And every time I open my wardrobe, I'm just like, there's Faye. And I reach for another bag. So yeah, any suggestions on how to clean this, then please let me know. Faye number two. <laughs> so... Fay number two arrived on the scene probably about six months after Fay number one. I was given a gift voucher by Farfetch and I bought this. Again, part gift voucher, part my own money. And I bought this khaki colour. And this is impossible to find anywhere now. Every time I wear this bag, people go crazy for it. It's exactly the same as Fay number one. You can fit so much in there and I just love this colour. It's a lot more practical than the Misty Beige. Right, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen this one quite a lot because I wore this every single day for about six months and I was obsessed with this bag. I still am very much obsessed with this bag. It just so happens that I bought another one which I became equally as obsessed by and so this one kind of took a bit of a backseat. But again, this one holds a bit of sentimental value Simon bought me this one at Heathrow Airport, Terminal 5, before, or rather, as we were about to catch our flight to our big six-week honeymoon, when we went trekking around America. I said trekking, it was a road trip, so it was not so much of the trekking, just more so of the driving and the eating. But he bought me this one, and it was such a nice surprise because we were just mooching around the airport, going to Weatherspoons as you do before we were catching our flight and then he was like oh do you want to have a look in here and I was like mm, yeah okay but I can't really afford anything um, and I'd seen this bag wanted this bag this one is the medium sized Dionysus the silver hardware it's got this little push lock on there and then it has this beigey coloured suede on the inside on this flap and also on the back as you can see, on the back is where it has had the most wear, which doesn't bother me so much because when you wear it, you can't see the back. But just something to bear in mind if you were thinking about this bag is that this back flap here, when you have it on the longest chain length, which would be that, it does rub against your hips. And so if you're wearing dark denim, just be very, very careful because you will get some denim transfer on there. But yes, very, very, very beautiful bag. And I love this one very much. This one definitely won't be leaving my collection anytime soon. It's a classic with the GG print and obviously Gucci. So hot right now. Moving on to this little monochrome number. This is the Pierce bag, which as you can see has a piercing. And this is by JW Anderson. I kind of wish that I'd bought either the tan or the all black and I'm actually considering having this white bit painted by the handbag spa because this monochrome is actually a little bit tricky to wear day to day it kind of makes the bag fancier than it should be I do love the bag though and it has gold hardware which is perfect for me because I wear a lot of gold jewellery um, inside it's quite roomy it's got a suede interior which is very very nice and kind of like the Faye, it has this concertina effect so that it expands with the more crap that you decide to put in there. I don't really wear this one as much as I probably should do, but I think that might be down to the white because the white is a little bit scarier. If this were all black, it would just be so much more classic. 
um, and I do think I would wear it more. So if you agree that I should paint this bit black, or not me, but let a professional, then let me know in the comments below. It's my favourite bag. It's my absolute favourite bag. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know this is my favourite bag because it is in every single picture. This is the Gucci Marmont, medium size, I think. And then I think this style with the flap is called a Matalassi. Oh, I literally have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right or even if that is the actual name. But I got this one in the classic black leather with the gold hardware. Very, very simple, although it does have this quilting effect on it. I bought this one, when was it? December, just gone. We were at the airport, so I bought it in Terminal 5 at Heathrow for, I think it was 1200 and something. So I think it's 1450 full price, but I got the tax off it. And I also bought a matching belt with this GG logo on it, but that was in tan leather. It's just such a good bag. So this is the good for everything bag. You can fit quite a lot of stuff in there. If you're a blogger, you can fit a camera in there. Although if you've got a massive DSLR, you're not gonna fit that in there. But if you're vlogging or you've got a compact or mirrorless, then that will fit in there perfectly. I also love the fact that kind of like the Dionysus, it has the two straps so that you can make it either that length or you can raise it and have it just under your shoulder. This one you can also cross body, but because of the size of this one, this is a medium size, it is a little bit cumbersome, so I don't tend to cross body it that much. I couldn't sing its praises enough. Well worth the money. And another little Gucci here. I think it's called a small top handle bag because it's got these little top handles. Anyway, it's got the printed made in Italy by Gucci and the Gucci's in that scripted text just below. Um, it's a good little size. It's a handy little, I would probably class this as kind of in between a cross body and a shoulder bag. Um, it'll fit my vlogging camera in there, wallet, oyster card, keys, you know, the usual kind of thing. Um, it has an adjustable skinny shoulder strap as well. And then this little like luggage tag with the double GG on there. That is the classic GG, no, it's not the new Marmont GG. Um, and Simon actually bought me this one from Munich Airport. Um, and this was a gift because I couldn't actually attend the annual family trip, which was a couple of Christmases ago, um, and everyone went to Munich apart from me. So he brought me this back from the airport as a consolation prize, and I quite like it. <laughs> and the last of my shoulder bags, um, this one actually isn't very old. This is the Saint Laurent Chic Cabas. I think I've pronounced that right. And I actually bought this one from Bista, um, again, part gift card from Vista Village, thank you very much, and part my own money. I think this was £695. Um, it's a tan leather, and I specifically went to Vista on that day looking for a tan leather bag because I had my Celine, which is in the tan suede, but this is more of like a tobacco tan. And again, I also wanted something with the gold hardware. I feel like you can never go wrong with Saint Laurent. It's very chic, as the name would suggest. And um, yeah, I came away with this one. So it's got the magnetic closure on the front with the Y. And then it has a zip, which is good, especially if you live in London, because bag safety is of great importance. I actually still have the tissue in here so that it would keep its shape, because as you can see, it's quite boxy. It has Saint Laurent on the zipper, it has the new Saint Laurent logo here on the front as well, and then it also has the little lanyard with the keys inside. Inside it is suede, has a couple of pockets in there, it's quite structured so it's nice and roomy, um, and yes it also has the shoulder strap so you can sling it over your shoulder if you need to be hands free. It's not particularly a good crossbody bag though, so if you were looking at getting something that you want to be a crossbody as well, this one is just, as you can see, a little bit too bulky. Um, I think this one is the medium size. 
there is one size above this and then I think there's actually two sizes below this. On to my last Gucci and I feel like there's a running theme here because again Simon bought me this one. <laughs> he bought me this when we were on our mini moon in Budapest and I remember we were sat we were sat in a Hooters, which is always his bar of choice when we're looking for a refreshment. Um, I think it's a novelty because we don't have that in this country. And I was looking on the net porto website and I was just looking at bags and we'd walked up this street where it had all of the luxury brands um, and I'd seen this bag and I was like, yeah, it's a nice bag, but no way did I think that he was going to buy it for me. Anyway, we went back down the street and he walked into Gucci and I was like, where are you going? And he was like, oh, I'm just going in here. And he was like, do you want this bag? And I was like, oh my gosh, you're buying me a designer handbag? Because by this point he hadn't ever bought me a designer handbag and I was like literally jackpot, I've married the right dude. He's gonna buy me designer handbags all the time. So I really thought I'd lucked out. And this is the Gucci Soho Disco Bag. Um, it's the one which has the cute little tassel on the side and I do believe this metallic colour is classed as champagne, which is very exotic. Um, and it's kind of like a mixture between pewter and gold, like oystery, um, but it's really nice and I guess with it being metallic it could also double up as more of an evening bag, although I've never really used it for evening, I just tend to use it um, as a day bag, as a crossbody always, it's great for being hands free. Uh, these are surprisingly large inside. I'm always so, so shocked at how much I can fit in this bag. Vlogging camera, yes. Uh, keys, yes. Phone, yes. I can even fit a micro umbrella, like one of those tiny fold down umbrellas in there as well. So because of the boxy shape, they do actually fit quite a lot in. And I know a lot of um, my friends and fellow bloggers that have this bag and I think they will all vouch for the fact that it is such a good bag. This size and this shape of bag is a winner. This one I do love. This is probably more of an evening bag, although it does have the silver chain strap as well, which you can actually tuck inside the bag and have it as more of a clutch. Um, it is the Crocodile Effect Leather. Um, it has the silver hardware with the tassel, which I love to play with. It's a very, very good bag. This size, I can't actually remember what it is. I'd be tempted to say medium because I always tend to go for medium, but then it might be large, I'm not really sure. Um, but I tend to wear this one a lot more in the winter. I love it with, um, I have a pair of those Zara biker trousers with the zippers on them and like the quilting. This looks wicked with those and like a big black chunky knit. Again, I don't use it as much as I probably should, but this is probably something that I wouldn't ever really get rid of because it is quite classic, especially with the Saint Laurent logo as well. And on to my last bag, and this is actually one of my current favourites. Um, this designer, I imagine, is probably not that well known, although this has become quite a little it bag over the last few months. This is the Bonsai Bag in Tan Nuvok by a designer called Simon Miller. Um, it's a US brand and admittedly I hadn't actually heard of him until, or I think it's a him and not just like a weird brand name, I um, hadn't actually heard of him until I noticed the brand on Metaporto and then a few bloggers started popping up with these bags with the round handles and I very quickly fell in love. It has the brand name and made in the USA stamped into the bottom of the bag and you can kind of gauge for size now how big the bag is. It's kind of like a bucket bag. It doesn't have a shoulder strap so it is literally hand or crook of arm which doesn't bother me so much with this because it's quite a quirky little bag and it adds a nice little touch to quite a few outfits as you might have seen me styling this up over on my Instagram. Safety wise, I think that's the only thing that lets this bag down. It is literally open, like that's how it is. There's no popper, no magnetic closure, no zip, no nothing. It's literally what you see is what you get. Anyone could just whoop, and you know pinch something that you have that's valuable in there you know i'm not going to moan too much because it was a really good little bag affordability wise this was 400 and 
I think 450, it might have been a little bit more than that. It was definitely not more than 500 pounds. I bought it off net a -Porte, um, and yeah, I love it. Such a cute bag, great for summer, probably not going to use it through winter. Um, but the only problem is, again, it's new buck, so like with my Chloe Faye, when you get it dirty, you're screwed, essentially. So I do still need to figure out how I'm going to get this cleaned because I do have a couple of marks on it already. Or maybe it's just going to be one of those bags that just gets knocked around and kind of looks rustically used and authentic that way. Don't know, we'll have to see how it goes. Right, guys, I hope you enjoyed going through all my handbags with me. A few of you have also requested that we film a shoe video, the same as this one, so that one will be coming up as well very, very soon. I'll run through all my designer shoes, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe wherever the button is, and check out my latest video wherever that is. And yeah, see you next time. Bye!